take it. I really think they should take it. But it's their choice, and it's their doctor's choice or the doctors in the hospital. But hydroxychloroquine, try it. Hey, what's up, guys? So no less than 30 or 40 people have commented on that previous video saying that we aren't treating the COVID and we're not doing anything for these patients. A lot of those people were referring to us not giving hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin to every single patient as if it was a miracle cure. So this video is going to be about the five reasons why hydroxychloroquine is not a miracle cure for COVID. The first reason is this study by Dr. Rayolt in France, which was very, very commonly cited in the early days of the pandemic. And in it were 22 patients, six of which were asymptomatic, who received hydroxychloroquine. And they found that there was a decreased viral load in these 22 patients at the end of the study. Now, this is super interesting, but the fact is that there's been a, a bit of controversy around this article because the journal that they published it in just recently stated the article does not meet the expected standard, especially relating to the lack of better explanations of the inclusion criteria and the triage of patients to ensure safety. I think he has more research coming out soon, and then we look forward to reading it. Now, this study by Tang et al., it was done fairly recently. It was actually a randomized control trial, and it showed no differences in the duration of viral detection and actually no clinical benefit to any of the patients. In fact, it showed an increased amount of adverse effects in the people who got hydroxychloroquine, which is obviously very concerning. Reason number three is this study by Dr. Galeris et al., very recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It is an observational study of 1,446 patients where he compares people who got hydroxychloroquine to people who did not get hydroxychloroquine, and they found no association between hydroxychloroquine and lower risk of intubation, which is being put on a mechanical ventilator, or mortality or death. They even go as far as to say that, quote unquote, the results do not support the use of hydroxychloroquine at present, outside randomized cl clinical trials testing its efficacy. Reason number four. So this one is a big one. It's the potential harm. The American College of Cardiology recently, relatively recently, put out these, this statement stating that hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, um, when given outside of a clinical trial, should only be done on, with the consultation of an infectious disease doctor and possibly a cardiologist to consult to monitor something called the QT interval. The QT interval is a measurement of how fast electricity is running through a certain area of your heart. And it can turn, if it gets too long, it can turn your heart rhythm from this into this, which is very dangerous. So it's also very dangerous to broadly recommend this drug to an undifferentiated population without other safety factors, without considering other safety factors, because other, other medications can also increase your QT interval. Number five, now despite exactly what I just said, um, there is a lot of evidence, and I agree with you guys, that hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin are relatively very safe drugs. They are. Now in this craze, to take these medications to potentially treat or prevent coronavirus, we've limited the supply of these drugs to patients who need them. Now these drugs are very, very proven effective therapies for many different types of illnesses. The top two that I can think of right now being lupus and um, rheumatoid arthritis. Now in lupus, which is a horrible disease, it can actually decrease the rate of lupus flares and therefore decrease the amount of systemic organ damage that people get. And these patients now have are having a difficult time getting a hold of these medications that they literally need to prevent organ damage. So in my opinion, these medications should be prioritized to people who have these diseases where the medication has been proven to have a clinical benefit, a real clinical benefit. So don't get me wrong. I truly hope that there is a study that shows that hydroxychloroquine decreases the amount of symptoms or decreases mortality or truly anything in this battle against coronavirus. But 
saying that we're not treating the COVID by not giving it to everyone is a gross overstatement. And we need to make sure that the drug combination, the medication regimen is safe before recommending it to everybody in the United States. Once again, thanks for watching. Um, even if you disagree, drop a dislike. If you agree, drop a like, com comment on what other videos you would like me to make. And again, thanks for watching. Peace.